Hi guys, uh, back again for another um, podcast. We're gonna uh, me and Brandon. We're just gonna talk about the weekend's games coming up. Um, I think we'll maybe do a couple of these a week uh, for the rest of the Six Nations. See how it goes, and obviously, if you like it, subscribe to both of our channels and uh, comment with feedback. Always appreciated. Okay, so I think Brandon, we're just gonna kick into it, the weekend's games. We'll start with uh, Scotland against Ireland. Uh, now, obviously, the big news of the day is that um, a hat trick hero against Italy, Blair Kinghorn, has been dropped to the bench. He's been replaced by Sean Maitland. I'm not altogether surprised. Uh, I'll be honest because I think I uh, understand Gregor Townsend's going for more experience on the wing which you'll have in Maitland and Seymour but uh, from my personal opinion I would have uh, dropped Tommy Seymour and put Maitland in on the right wing and kept Kinghorn on the left but I've also had mates t- uh, tell me that Kinghorn could make an impact off the bench if um, it's a tight game towards the end and he could uh, use, his pay- use his pace and his step to cause Ireland a few problems which is possible and um the, obviously, the other changes are Johnny Gray's back in the starting lineup, which is no real surprise um, at all. I, I, I personally would put him on the bench because I thought Gilchrist did enough to keep his place. No, um, Ben Tulis, sorry, did enough to keep his place. Um, and uh, uh, that, but yeah, and like I said, I know um, how, you know what a good player Johnny Gray is in his day. Even though I don't think he's been at his best this season at all. And other changes: Simon Bergen in for WP Nell. Nell obviously injured. No surprise there. And uh, Rob Harley on the bench, who I'm not a big fan of, but he's there anyway. So, yeah. Uh, what do you think of our t- chances in our team for uh, Saturday? Well, I think it's a, it's a good side, uh, first of all. It's good to see that you kept your 9, 10, 12 and 13 all the same. Mm. Uh, I thought Sam Johnson on uh, Saturday against Italy, I thought he had a decent game mm. for his first match. Finn Russell did take the, the game, so there's no surprise that he starts, obviously. Um, and, yeah, a Kinghorn, it's an interesting one. Um, obviously, it's quite difficult for me personally to... I wouldn't drop someone who's on form as such. If someone scored three tries, they're on form, and if they're confident, I would say go for it. Kinghorn must be thinking, what more do I need to do to be starting against the Irish Um but as you said, experience is really, really key. Sean Maitland coming in, loads of caps. He's done it before. Um, so, yeah, him but coming on off the bench, Kinghorn coming off the bench could be an impact player. Um, Kinghorn has said that he wants to play fullback more, but you're not really going to display Stuart no, Hogg. No. Because yeah, he's been fantastic, and his stats from Saturday, I had a look at them before, and I'll talk about them in a bit were incredible. He had a fantastic match. Um, but King on off the bench when a few Irish props are a bit tired, a few of the uh, backs are a little bit tired, bring him on, a bit of pace could be um, something really, really good. Um, and yeah, I think he's a decent squad and I think you do have a chance to win the match against Dine a bit. Um, but yeah, it's a few little... Kinghorn is the one I'm surprised by. Um, and as you said, Tommy Seymour maybe could have made way and Kinghorn stayed on the pitch. Um, and... Seymour hasn't really done it um, in the autumn that much. He scored two against Fiji, but it was Fiji. And, um, Three against you know, the, he scored it, a hat-trick yeah. against Fiji. A hat-trick, sorry, yeah. my bad. I mean, to be, um, to be honest with you, I think that's about the only real good game he's had for us since the Lions tour, because mm-hmm. uh, he's been in the squad, He's like, and, he, and to me, he's just kind of not really justified his place in the last mm-hmm. since the Lions yeah. tour, apart from the Fiji game where he got a hat-trick. Uh, so that's why I, I think, like you know, sort of maybe um, time to give Kinghorn a shot, give him his because he's he's in form, he's playing well. We've also got uh, Darcy Graham at Edinburgh, who's playing really well, yeah. and I'd uh, actually recommend to everyone to watch out for him in the future because I think he's got a big future. Uh, so yeah, really I think um, I think he's really young. Ta- he's really young, talented, isn't he? Oh, yeah. he didn't he get the winning try for you uh, for Edinburgh, yeah, he did. the Champions yeah, he did. Cup? Yeah. Yeah. It, was, it yeah. was quite it was quite an easy try though because I think it was Pergosh just passed him. He just had to walk three three about five oh, meters right. and he's in. <laughs> but no, uh, yeah. if you watch him play, he's a really talented winger with a good sidestep. I'd say he's probably I I don't say not as good as Shane Williams, but he's like our version. He could be our version of Shane Williams. Um, yeah, yeah. So I think yeah. he, he's one to look out for. Um, but yeah, I mean, I really think with Tommy Seymour, he ha- he has to step his game up. He has to really show like his qu- 
quality and he um, against the bigger teams because to me he hasn't done it enough in the past couple of years. Uh, so I'm hope I'm hoping he does on Saturday and I'm hoping I'm wrong obviously. But um, you know he's one player I've been I really think needs to needs to get his act together a bit. So that's... I I don't feel like he gets involved in the game enough. You know he kind of stays out on the wing sometimes comes in a little bit but he can go missing for fifty minutes mm. and he hardly touches the ball. And modern day wingers tend to come in field a lot. Mm. He's not the biggest build, so you can't use him as a George North, where he can almost act as a centre mm. in some uh, parts of the match. Um, but he needs to get involved more, get his hands on the ball more, run at the defence a little bit more. That's why I like Kinghorn, maybe because he's younger, he doesn't have that fear factor, he just goes for it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I was surprised that Kinghorn was dropped. Um, but experience is going to be key in this match because it could be a very close match mm. um, against Italy. Me and you were speaking about it before the game. We expected you to win quite comfortably, to be honest. And although the scoreline didn't look that comfortable, the game itself was pretty comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, we'll get on to Italy later. Um, but no, I was surprised King Holm was dropped. But a key player for you, obviously, is going to be Finn Russell again. Um, what I love about him is how he takes the ball right up to the defensive line and then he decides to pass or kick, so he draws in defenders really well. And as we said on, la on the last podcast, I think him going to France has really benefited him. Absolutely. I think it's really helped him develop his game, playing against um, some of the best defences in Europe because the French are just massive and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> their pack is huge, as we saw on Friday. Um, so I think it's really helped his game. And Laidlaw as well. I think him going to Clermont has helped him um, uh, uh, to develop his game as well. So, yeah, uh, yeah, it's going to be an interesting game. The Irish have made some interesting changes as well. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, I was just going to say one thing. I think I agree with you because I think Finn, Finn's definitely getting better at, um, you know, balancing uh, between when to be cautious, when to be innovative, when to be a bit of a maverick. So, but, um, again, like uh, last Saturday, I... No disrespect to Italy, but it was against Italy. This is going to be a much bigger challenge because, I mean, yeah. I fully expect the Irish uh, big boys to target him, and um, I hope he hope he handles it. I hope um, that our pack can uh, protect him enough to make sure he's um, you know got a platform to work from, so he's not getting the ball off slow ball, or he's not getting it where he's um, on the back on the back foot. Because um, then you know I think Ireland, in that case, Ireland will just have a field day with him. But we need to make sure that. I mean, because I, I don't think we're going to play the way we did against England. Um, I think we're, because we don't have, like, Manu Tulangis or Billy Vunipolas um, or Marco Vunipolas uh, at all. So we're going to we're gonna have to play a bit differently and we're going to have to, you know, make sure we're solid up front and knowing when to when to use the back line and when to spread it. Um, so, yeah, that'll be interesting to see how we do that. But, yes, um, I think we'll get on to Ireland now. Uh um, they've had injuries uh, with Stander and with uh, Toner, their biggest, mo their most notable ones, pardon me, and uh, Gary Ringrose as well is out. Uh, Rob Carney's back at fullback. Um, yeah. I'm not. No surprise. No, no. No surprise. No. No. I mean, I, I would have thought um, it would either be him or um, uh, Schmidt might give Larmer a shot, but uh, he's oh. stuck with Larmer on the yeah. bench and he's gone for experience, uh, understandably. Yeah. Uh, Keith Earls uh, is fit enough, keeps his place in the wing. Um, I'm not hugely surprised that he's picked Chris Farrell at 13 um, over Robbie Henshaw. Um, I mean, obviously, Henshaw is a pretty big player to drop out the 23 entirely. But, I mean, I think Chris Farrell is, um, you know, he's a very direct player. He's a very strong player. He's got a, he can, he's got a good pass in him as well. So I'm not... Um, I mean, you you know what he's like because I think it was was it last year against Wales. Uh, he was absolutely uh, brilliant in that game. I think he was man of the match. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, I'm not surprised Henshaw's been dropped. Um, it wasn't his fault that he had no. He didn't have that bad a game. It was just that he was out of position. He played fullback a few times, but Carney coming in is no surprise at all. Experience, his class. Uh, a few years ago, people thought he's past his best, but he seems to. Well, I was one of them. To where he was. <laughs> and you know, I think it's a very, it's it's obvious that he was going to come back in if he was fit. Uh, I do feel a bit for Henshaw. Um, it wasn't as I said they played bad. It was that Ben Youngs is kicking mm -hmm. behind with the box kicks was so good, was world class that 
any fullback would have really struggled, and a fullback who doesn't yeah. even usually play fullback, it was going to be tough for, for yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. Um, just a few. Yeah. Oh no, I was just yeah, just a few things about. Go on, sorry. Oh no, I was just going to say about Henshaw. I think like you know it was. Uh, you know, that was where England were smartest because there were times he was a bit out of position and, and uh, England spotted that and they tried to kick him behind and he was caught like be- it, between his five meter line and his own goal line uh, with like a few many of the kicks. So, um, but I thought he did he did his best with what he had. But again, it's clear he's he's he he started his career at full back. I think it was full back outside centre he started his career. But it's clear he's more he's so used to the centre now that he's you know got to be stuck stuck there. I think. Uh, from now on, so yeah. that gives Ireland good depth at centre. But um, yeah, that's all I wanted to add there. Um, you want to carry on with what you were saying? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, yeah, and I think that um, you know a few of Ireland, well, a lot of Ireland's players on uh, Saturday went missing. So players such as Sexton, mm-hmm. he just completely went missing out of the match. Connor Murray can't remember what he did really in the match except for box kick a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, Bundyaki didn't do anything throughout the whole match, really. Um, and so they can't afford to go missing in big games now. Obviously, England played really well, and they were brilliant. They were mm. fantastic. But from an Ireland team who you know, beat New Zealand in Dublin, who went to Australia and won a series, who won the Grand Slam, to suddenly go to that and all of a sudden not have any answers, mm. it's going to be interesting yeah. how they're going to try and play on Saturday because... For you guys, for Scotland, there's no point you trying to change your game. So, for instance, there's no point you trying to run through the middle of them because you're not going to do that because, one, you're not as physical as them and their defence is good. But you know in Finn Russell you have a number 10 who can play with width, who can run up to the defensive line and open spaces up. You have great attacking centres in Hugh Jones and Sam Johnson. And you have wingers who can finish chances. So... The way you're going to play, I would think, is to spread the ball about, uh, build up um, um, possession and territory, and then when the time is right, when you've got the um, the work at the breakdown has been done, then you'll spread the ball. Mm-hmm. So for Ireland, players such as Sexton, Bundyaki, um, all these different players just can't afford to go missing. And I think the start of the game is going to be really, really key to see how it goes. If Ireland starts strongly and get an early try, I think you're in for a very, very tough afternoon. Yeah. But if you score first, if you score first, it's going to be a very interesting match. What do you think? Yeah, I I agree with that. I mean, I'm expecting Ireland to come out fight, come out firing. But I mean, mm-hmm. and the early stages are going to be key. I'm hoping we can you know knock one over them earlier on, and uh, if we can at very least keep it tight, if we can get a couple of scores in early, that'll be brilliant as well. But if we can keep it tight early on, to make sure we're not you know, to doing anything too stupid at all and just make sure we're playing smart. Um, we also need to make, I mean, you say we, like, we'll spread the ball a bit, which I'm all for so long as we get our platform right up front and that we're getting a solid base to work from and making sure our kicking game's good as well because I thought we I thought we uh, did that okay at times against Italy. I mentioned this in the last one. Uh, I think um, where we were, I thought we were kicking for the corners pretty well and we need to do... I'd say better as well, if not better, against um, Ireland to make sure they're pinged back and uh, put under pressure, like similar to way England did. And I think we're we're capable of doing that. Obviously, with uh, with Finn and uh, Hoggy at full back, um, and Greg Laidlaw as well can box kick. So I think um, if we can get the accuracy right in their kicking game, we can, we can really ping them back and cause them a few problems. Um, and I certainly think we've got the. The line out forwards to be more destructive at line outs, um, which I don't think we were as much as I would have liked us to be against Italy during the autumn, but I'm hoping that's an area we can improve on, so we'll see what happens there. Um, yeah, I, I think, yeah, for, for you guys, um, a clearly, Ireland know your um, your ability counter attack. You know, Stuart Hogg, some stats from Saturday are incredible 13 runs, 126 metres made, four clean breaks, and four defenders beaten. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they're, they're not going to kick the ball straight to Hogg. No. Um, so Ireland are obviously going to have a lot of possession, I would assume. And it's about how can you um, play in the right areas of the pitch, really. Yeah. If you're trying to play in your own 22, then there's no point. No. But if you play the territorial game, as you say, the kicking, if you can get that right, as England did, keeping them in their area, in their 22, in their half, then you stand a good chance. And with Hogg um, on form and just the way he can counter-attack, 
um, it should be really interesting to see how you guys yeah. go. I mean, I'm, I'm expecting that's the thing. I'm expecting Ireland to still kick it a lot with uh, Murray and Sexton, obviously, and Carney at fullback. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I'd ex- I'm not expecting from the kicking game Hogg to see as much ball directly. Um, expect because I remember when Saracens played Glasgow uh, a couple of years ago in the quarter final Hurricane Cup, and um, where their kicking game they basically just like kicked it so accurate and um, crisp accuracy to make sure it's trying to take Hogg's attacking threat out of the equation. Um, I'm expecting Ireland to try and do similar this on Saturday, so we need to make sure that um, we're we're smart enough with that and that uh, you know we're not giving away anything cheap and that you know when we get the ball we're trying to keep it and we're knowing where to kick it back to and that we're accurate. So I think it's going to be a game of accuracy more than anything and it's going to be uh, yeah, it's going to be decided by like who's maybe going to make the odd mistake um, here and there. Um, like all majority of international games, and I think it's going to come down to small margins. But like I say, hopefully, you know, in in, in that situation, we can be smart enough um, to outmaneuver them and uh, outpace them. But we'll see, we'll see. Um, up front, obviously, Ireland have uh, gone for. Um, They've gone bringing Sean O'Brien back, and uh, mm. with Stander out, they've gone for Jack Conan at eight, which I, I think are very interesting, interesting calls, and again suggesting that they're going to try and absolutely power us up front, mm. uh, especially yeah. with Sean O'Brien being back there, um, and that's I think how they're going to play. They're going to be pretty physical, pretty pretty pragmatic, and we need to make sure that we're smart enough to deal with it, and that we're not trying to force the game either, and that we're knowing. Like when to pick our chances, and like I said, if it's a tight game, and we can be smart enough in uh, the last 10 15 minutes. I think we can definitely do it. Yeah, and I, I think, as you say, it's about being patient, making sure you have the right base, the right platform to go forward and attack. Mm-hmm. And it could come down to one or two mistakes. Um, Ireland coming up to you guys, they're a wounded animal, and yeah. you know, they, they are going to be dangerous, we know that, but at home, you do stand a chance. Um, would I back you on Saturday? Maybe be not. Um, <laughs> I, I'll be honest with you. I do expect Ireland to win. I don't expect a bonus point. I think it'll be really close. I'm going to say there's going to be seven to ten points in it. That's what I think. But I think Ireland will have enough to beat you on the day. But I'd like to be proved wrong. So who knows? What about you? What do you think? <sighs> Three. Head or heart? Which one? <laughs> Three to six points for Scotland. Fuck it. Uh, hey, there so, you go. Hey, you've got to stay like that. Yeah, I think, no, I think I think we I think we can just do it. But uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm expecting my heart heart rate to be going through the roof um, for the whole eighty minutes. So I'm not, I'm not yeah. expecting an easy ride. But I think we can do it and um, mm. put a bit of a dent in Ireland's uh, six a big dent in Ireland's Six Nations as well. So um, yeah. yeah. Like you said, yeah. hope, hopefully, hopefully that'll happen. But um, we'll see on Saturday. From from Ireland's point of view, they're a wounded, a wounded, a wounded animal. Pardon me, as you say, and they'll just want to bounce back. And I'm expecting them to be absolutely uh, chaotic, absolutely phys- physical as anything, and you know, just get give it, try and like basically batter us off the park. I'm expecting them to try and do that. But hopefully, we're smart enough and robust enough to deal with it, and we can beat them playing proper rugby. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, um, you want to move on to it, it, you guys now, Italy, Wales. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll let you uh, start by talking about the Wales team. Uh, then we'll talk a bit about it, it, uh, Italy and who they picked. So uh, you want to take it away, talk about the Wales team they picked, That's 10 fantastic. changes and Jonathan Davis as yeah. captain. Yeah, massive changes. Um, as I was saying to you just before, I think too many changes possibly, but I do expect us to have enough. We'll get onto that in a minute. So a few of the big changes. Um, Jonah Holmes comes in on the wing for George North. Um, I'm not a fan that much of him. I don't think he offers that much for us. Um, and I'm quite surprised he's been picked for this one. Owen Watkin at centre alongside John Davis. Really exciting centre. Very physical, but really good attacking player. Young, um, got a lot to, um, to show and he's got great skills. So I'm really excited to see how he goes. Bigger comes in at 10 instead of Anscombe, which I was quite surprised by. Mm-hmm. I'd have liked to have seen Anscombe given another shot at it um, to get his confidence up after quite a poor performance against uh, France. Mm-hmm. Alec Davis at 9, so he comes in instead of Thomas Williams, but Gareth Davis doesn't play, so 
question is who's going to play against England because Alla Davis won't play against England. Navidia 8 is interesting. Then Tom, Tom Young from um, Wasps gets his first match. Interesting to see how he goes. Not going to lie, I don't know much about him. At 6 then, Aaron Wainwright. Really excited to see how this guy goes. He played against Tonga um, in his natural position. But then against South Africa when we beat them in the autumn, Moriarty got injured at 8. And Wainwright came on. And then I think... Someone I can't remember. Someone else got injured, and he went into their position and had an incredible match. Um, so really excited to see how he goes. And for the Dragons, he's been their only decent player really this season because the Dragons always struggle. Um, and yeah, quite an inexperienced front line really, a uh, front row. Sorry, except for Samson Lee who comes in, who's pretty experienced. But Elliot D of the Dragons, he comes in at hooker, and Nicky Smith as well comes in. Um, interested to see how them two go. Very inexperienced. We've got experience on the bench, so we can bring players on. I'm glad to see Liam Williams starting at fullback again. I think it'd been silly to put Hallam Amos in at this point. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's really interesting that Gatland has gone for such a an inexperienced side. Lots and lots of changes. It could be risky. What do you think of it? Um, I agree with you. I think 10's a bit too many. Um, I get he's trying to look forward to the World Cup, um, and that to some extent's fine. But at the same time, he 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 had in the summer against Argentina, and in the autumn, he you know sort of uh, tooled around a bit with the squads. And during the Six Nations, I mean, especially after uh, last week's performance, where I thought. Like you, you need you need players likes of uh, Anscom as you said, um, to get some confidence back and to uh, going forward, especially with England just around the corner after this one. So yeah, I agree. I think ten changes a bit too much. Um, good for Jonathan Davis though, uh, being made captain. I think I think he will. Yeah. Um, I'm confident he'll do a fine job. Um, as he usually does, and um. Yeah, and jo- Jonah Holmes, um, so so on him. I thought he was. I didn't think he was that bad when I saw him in the o- o- autumn. Um, I didn't think he was that great. But I didn't think he was bad either. Um, Liam Williams at fullback again. I think he was definitely your best player last week, so he deserves a spot. Uh, Thomas Young. I mean, a lot has been a lot of excitement around him. Uh, he was playing well for Wasps just now, um, and uh, obviously uh, being coached by his dad, um, Dai Young. Yeah. Uh, so he's been so from what I've seen of him, he looks a very good player. So um, I think uh, he was deserving of his chance at some point or another. So uh, from that perspective, maybe Italy was the right cho- choice just to um, blood him in. Uh, but I think I still would have uh, kept Alan Jones um, at, at uh, uh, second row just for experience. I would have kept um, at least uh, either Ken Ken Owens or Rob Evans or. You know, one, at least two of the three, yeah. you know, three front row players as well. Mm-hmm. I would have, I would have kept. Um, and in the back back line, but in the back line, I, I think the only change I'd probably make would be of um, keeping Ams come in, and maybe Ala Jones, Ala da- Ala Jones, Ala Davis. Uh, <laughs> maybe That'd maybe interesting. A- <laughs> <laughs> Ala Jones, we're walking in the air. Uh, yeah, something like that. Uh, well, if Alan David do, does do that, then uh, yeah, but might might be on cue. But no, um, yeah, Alan Davis, I'm so 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 on again. Uh, I've seen bits of him. I don't think he's as good as your uh, first two scrum halves. So um, I would have I would have kept uh, e- either put Garth Davis or Tomas Williams uh, at the start. But yeah, so it'll be we'll see how it goes. Um, I am expecting Wales to win. Uh, I think. Um, but I think it will be a bit closer than uh, Gatland. I think thinks it is. Um, thinks it will be. Pardon me. So yeah, we'll see what happens there. Um, you got anything else you want to add about Wales? Uh, I'll talk a bit about who it left it. Yeah, uh, Wales. Just a few things. Um, really, uh, Italy actually against Scotland were very disciplined. Um, mm-hmm. you know, I looked at some stats. Only four penalties conceded. Mm-hmm. Uh, their line-out was really strong, 13 out of 13. Mm. So we know that Italy are going to be um, very hard to break down, and that's why I think this team is just too inexperienced, because if things are close at 60 minutes and 
things are going to be a bit tense, maybe Italy go in front, which I don't expect them to do, but if they do, then yes, we have players on the bench, but is this team good enough and experienced enough to be able to to get together and say, come on, we can do this? Uh, defensively, we were really poor in that first half against I France, think... 19, turno 19 turnovers mm -hmm. conceded in the whole game. That is insane, mm -hmm. 19. Um, and we only won four out of our seven lineouts, yeah. which conditions didn't help, obviously. But um, we'll see how Elliot D does with his throwing into the line. Hopefully, he'll do a bit better than Ken Owens did. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, we'll get on to the Italy team in a minute. But one player I want to point out, and I'm not sure if he's playing yet, but I hope he is. David CC. I think that's how you say his name. Yeah. He had an incredible match against Scotland. Yeah, he was good, yeah. 18, 18 tackles. Zero missed. Mm -hmm. Had a fantastic match. Best defensive performance for Italy. And obviously Parise is going to be their key man throughout the match. But I haven't seen the Italian team so enlighten me. Uh, okay, well, they've. Uh, I think it's three three or four changes they've made. They've uh, picked uh, full-back Padovani. Uh, he's normally a full-back. They've picked him on the right wing. Uh, they've moved uh, Esposito to 11 on the left wing. So um, that's an interesting change. Campagnaro's back at his normal position of outside centre and in the pack they've only made one change at uh, loose head prop and I I apologise I can't pronounce the night, the guy's name for the life of me so I'm not going to bother mm -hmm. uh, but that's their only change in the pack from uh, the team that played us last Saturday so that is the Italian team I expect them again I think um, they will be fairly solid in the set pieces uh, I think that I, again I think I agree with you about that guy David Cisse I thought he had a very good game I thought their scrum half as well um, who's been who was yeah. obviously stepped in for Tito Tibaldi but he's picked again yeah. uh, for uh, Saturday I thought he looked uh, a pretty decent player uh, um, it's pa Pava Zani so, so, pardon me <laughs> For, but yeah, um, I think um, he he looks like he could be a decent sniper, if not a great, even if not be a great controller. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think um, if, if I don't think you should worry too much if it's a close in, towards the end, because I think Italy will fall off fall off the rails a bit unless they get um, like five ten points ahead, um, which will give them a lot of confidence. But I again, I expect you to be in front. I can't say how close it would be in the last uh, going into the last twenty minutes, and I'm expecting your bench to make an impact and to um, you know just seal the game uh, with that. Mm. Um, and I think you do have enough experience in your backline as well. You've got uh, bigger. You've got John Davis, uh, obviously. Uh, you've got uh, Liam Williams at fullback. Uh, so you've got you've got the player, the know-how players there. It's just your pack. I think experience mm -hmm. is not lacking a bit. Um, I think it's mm -hmm. the right choices to maybe to pick Wayne Wright and uh, Young in the back back row. I do agree with them, but like I said, I don't agree with uh, dropping Alwyn Jones, and I don't agree with dropping um, Rob Evans either. I can understand maybe the hooking change since uh, Ken Owens didn't have a great game last Saturday, but uh, Friday night, sorry. Um, but apart from that, yeah, I think you've maybe made a bit too many. But uh, overall, I do still expect you to have enough uh, to get one over Italy. So I don't think you should, I don't think you should be yeah, too worried. Yeah, I expect us to win. Um, I do expect us to get the bonus points mm -hmm. just. Mm -hmm. um, I think we need to be really disciplined, not give cheap penalties away, because if Italy keep the scoreboard ticking, it makes it more and more tense. Mm -hmm. But if we can keep the scoreboard ticking from our side... We know that bigger can kick over, um, which Anscombe doesn't always offer you that um, consistency with kicking. Um, and yeah, Italy will be strong set pieces. They'll be strong up front. They'll build a good base. Um, and yeah, I do expect us to win, but I am shocked at the team, as you said. Um, but I expect a bonus point win. What's your prediction? Uh, yeah, I agree with that. I think I think it will be, as I said, I think it will be like somewhat tightish going to the last twenty minutes. But I think you as well pull away and get the bonus point, um, and you you won't have much of a problem. I mean, maybe uh, Italy. I think will maybe get a couple of tries and they'll maybe give you a bit of a tough time up front in the first half. But again, I expect Wales to win. I'll say by about fifteen to twenty points. I'll say Wales will win by. Right. So I don't I don't think you should be too worried. But again. The the one concern I would have going into the England game afterwards would be momentum because of course Gatlin's going to change it again uh, for the England game. He's going to go for more experience. So 
you know, and it'll be mostly the same team that played against France. So you're going like playing against France, didn't do so well, got a bit lucky, and then you're changing it so much, then you're changing it back to basically that team. So, um, which I'm not so sure about, but again, you know, we'll see see how that works out uh, for you um, in a couple of weeks. Yeah. And uh, I think that's right, right cue to go on to speaking about England and their game against France. The teams are not out yet for either side uh, at the time of this recording. So, um, yeah, we'll just uh, go into it. Big blow for England, you losing Mario Toje. He's out for at least the next two matches uh, against uh, France and against Wales, of course. Uh, but Joe, I think Joe Launchbury coming back in, they won't miss out that much because um, we all know what a good second row he is. And apart from that, I don't think England will really make any significant changes. I think they're gonna, there's going to be a couple on the bench. I expect Dan Cole and... Uh, um, ben Moon is that his, his first name? Ben Moon, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. I expect they'll come in on the bench as prop cover, but apart from that, I'm expecting basically the same England team to go out on s- Sunday to play France. So, what's your thoughts on that? I think there could be one possible player who could force a case to come in. He's been injured, played really well when he played in the autumn for England. That's Joe Cock and a singer, mm. uh, the back winger machine absolute machine fast strong and he had such an impact in the autumn so he could have a case at home against france who are playing really poorly at the minute to be honest um low on confidence for france it could be the game for him um, I, 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 I don't know i'd put um so, sorry man i don't know i'd put uh, him on the bench uh, you know just um okay. put chris ashton back on the sidelines for a bit more yeah. <laughs> which will uh <laughs> I mean, he, yeah. I, he'd be gutted at that he's like you know he's worked his way he's got I'm back in the team and it's like no no we don't need you now <laughs> but yeah I, I think Chris Ashton is a good player but for me um, he's a wee dick you know Joe, yeah he is <laughs> yeah, Joe Cock and Joe Cock and Singer is he is the modern winger in rugby you know and I think he's for really, England yeah, really what good. England did so well on Saturday against Ireland was dominate physically yeah. Yeah, and I think if he can do that, um, and I, I do expect England to win. I, you know, I'd love France to put one over England, but I just can't yeah, see it happening. Same. I mean, there's one player, there's one player I'd love to see play for England, uh, for France. Sorry, it's Dupont at uh, scrum half, mm-hmm. the guy who plays for Toulouse. He's so quick, and Toulouse have been the informed team in France this year in the Champions Cup and in the top fourteen, and. Morgan Power, is he past his best? I don't think he offers that much going forward mm-hmm. as such. Um, he, he dictates the game, yes, well. But I think against England, I think France just needs to go for it. Mm-hmm. Because if you sit back and let England dominate you physically and come on to you, you don't stand a chance against them. And I think that Jacques Brunel should say to the team, just go for it, throw the ball around, run at them, you know, have a th- uh, just try and tie them out if you can because they're a big physical team. See what you can do. Um, and I'd love to see DuPont get a chance, but I don't think that's going to happen. Um, but, yeah, France are just typically French on Friday and I expect them to be the same again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I, no, I, I agree with you about, I think I would pick DuPont, especially because Para didn't have a great game against uh, Wales. His kicking especially was poor, but... Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, I agree. I think Dupont should start at nine uh, with Lopez at ten for France. Um, apart, I mean, I'm just going to go back and briefly talk about the England wingers because uh, Johnny May and Jack Newell did so well uh, against Ireland. I don't see the need um, for Eddie Jones to change them at all. So I think you should stick with them and maybe Koka Zalga on the bench. Is that sorry? Is that how you pronounce his name? Cockinessinger. Pardon, par, pardon me. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna try it anymore. Just hit uh, him on the him on the bench. I'd have hit him. Uh, yeah. But yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Sorry, there's a bit of buzz in there. But yeah, to, like I said, him yeah. on, him on the bench, and uh, I'd keep me and uh, no start at the start because they've done nothing to um, deserve being dropped. For France, uh, yeah, I would pick Dupont at nine, um, and I think I would. I maybe mostly stick with the. The same back line, because uh, I didn't think uh, Roman Intimac did a lot wrong. Um, I don't think Fafana did that much wrong either. Uh, I, I'd actually maybe put... Uh, oh, oh, what's his name? Jeffrey Duma... What, what's his name again? Du- Duma, I, 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 pardon me. 
Uh, the, the guy who plays for La, Ro- La Rochelle, who's uh, a really, really good centre. Maybe I don't know. You maybe put him in for Fafana's possibly. Uh, um, and uh, but yeah, I think I was apart from that. I wouldn't Fran- if I was France, I wouldn't change that much because it was a weird game against Wales because they didn't really play. Ter- they played well in the first half, but you know they basically threw it away in the second half. So. It wasn't so much that they tactically got it wrong. It was more they just, you know, bottled it really. So it was more a mental thing, yeah. more a mental thing, I'd say, than a than a tactical thing. So, I mean, that's that's what I think. I would probably not change it too much. But um, knowing uh, France and uh, I expect uh, and Jack Jack Brunel, I expect yeah. to make a few make a few changes, but uh, we'll see what happens. I, yeah. I am expecting. I'm actually with you. I'm expecting either to be uh, Morgan Parra or Baptiste Seren who takes the nine nine shirt. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, actually, I'll say I think it'll be Seren. I'll be honest with you. Who'll get the nine shirt. Mm. So, uh, okay. um, I, yeah, I, yeah I, I think Parra will get it. Um, you know, uh, five years ago he was world class. Is he world class no. now? I don't know. No. I just feel like. Yeah, exactly. I just feel like France, you know, um, they have nothing to... Nobody expects them to beat England Mm -hmm. at Twickenham. Nobody expects it. Go over there, throw the ball about. You know, France, when they attack properly, like we saw against Wales, and yes, we were poor, but when they really do it properly, they're brilliant. Mm -hmm. You know, they have some great plays in the back line, but it just doesn't happen often enough. Or... They do everything right, and the last pass, they drop it, or it goes forward, or they try the miracle pass, which doesn't need to be tried at that point, or they have lapses in defence. But I would honestly just say, just go for it, put Dupont at, at nine, and uh, maybe Fikou to come on, Gareth Fikou to come on, mm. um, and Tamak will be targeted, I think, oh, yeah. um, when he's on the ball, because he's quite a small guy. And as, he doesn't often play centre, he mostly plays ten, um, but... You can imagine a Courtney Laws, you know, going after him. Oh no! Uh, if if Entomax up against um, Manu, uh, then yeah. I think that could be a rough yeah. ride in itself, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if you remember the game uh, a few years ago where Courtney Laws absolutely nailed the number yeah, ten Houston, for France yeah. at Twickenham. Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely nailed him. Yeah, I um, that. and yeah, I think Entomax if he does play. Could be in for a rough ride. Oh yeah. Oh no. They're gonna because they're gonna um, go down the ten twelve channel. No, mm. no doubt about that. Yeah. They'll you know have. Uh, mm. That's where actually where I wouldn't be surprised. I'll say uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Bastaro is brought back in the twenty three. Mm. Um, yeah. Possibly, but uh, yeah. I don't know. I think like it was uh, clear by uh, la- last week that France were trying to get their big boys up front and more flair players in the back. So. Um, that's where I think if Bastero does come back, he'd be on the bench. But again, most the team's not out yet, so we'll see what happens there. But I think uh, we're both in agreement that expect England to win pretty comfortably. Uh, maybe not by a massive scoreline, um, but I would say England by seven to ten points. What about you? I've got a horrible feeling that England are going to get a bonus point. Um, I just think that. It really depends how France start. If France start well, um, not that it meant anything last week, but if France start well, <laughs> um, if France start well, it could make it interesting. But if England score first, then it's really a question of when are they going to get the bonus point for me personally. At home, they're so strong. Um, but it'll be a very physical game because both sides, France, massive pack, England, physicality is huge for them. So it's really going to be a battle of the forwards. Whoever wins that mm. will definitely come on top. But I just think England will have too much. So I'm going to say England by 15 to 20 points. Okay. That's my prediction. Yeah, like, like I said, I think we're both agreement that uh, England will, you know, win that, win that. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I expect them to have too much uh, nous and uh, too much energy for France as well. That's another problem with France is uh, as well as their. Uh, ability to mentally capitulate is their fitness as well because they've got a big forward pack and I think England with uh, Farrell's kicking game uh, and tactical now still have enough to move the pack move that big pack around uh, to wear them down and I think in the end yeah it'll be too much for them but I think France will keep it close enough that England uh, go seven to ten but I wouldn't be surprised if you're right either man so yeah that's that uh, anything else you want to say about uh, 
No, I think that's it. Just looking forward to the matches. Um, yeah, so for me, it's Ireland, Wales and England to win. And for you, Scotland, Wales and England to win. Is that yeah, right? Yeah. You still sticking with Scotland? Yes, yes. Sticking the neck on the night. <laughs> Got yeah. to be confident in this. No, I do think you could do it. I do think you could do it. Um, it's just about who starts the strongest for me. Yeah. Um, if we get if we, an interesting match, though. yeah, if we can get the Murrayfield crowd uh, rocking as well, that'll definitely help us. But again, yeah. well, fingers. I've got a fingers and toes crossed. We'll see what happens. Uh, just hopefully we can be smart enough to um, get the balance of our game right and that we can beat Ireland. But. Uh, yeah, apart from that, I think that's pretty much all I've got to say. And yeah. and look forward to the games on Saturday. Uh, again, the England and France teams have still to be announced at the time of recording this. So uh, when they're announced, um, they will be announced. So I'll say to that. <laughs> um, I don't know if I'm going to do a video on that or not yet. But um, yeah, so that's all I've got to say. All we've got to say, guys. Uh, thanks, Brandon, for. Thank you very much. Once again. And so that's it. And take care and we'll see you later. Yeah. Thank you very much.